here's the headphone amplifier I decided to go with. I went with this shit. Asgard 2, a full Class A headphone amplifier with a preamp function. There's a set of RCA outputs on the back of the unit that allow you to run um, an RCA cable to a power amplifier, or you run it to an integrated amplifier, um, but then in something like that, you would be going through two different preamps. So just keep that in mind. But yeah, it's a great looking unit. This is the first time I've literally unboxed it. I haven't taken it out or looked at it or anything like that. This is the first time. So really heavy. I'd say it's probably, I don't know, maybe seven or eight pounds. Um, really solid. And um, I mentioned in, when I was filming the review for the DAC I ended up buying that I did want to buy the the uh, Bifrost stack, the shit uh, Bifrost stack. But uh, again, it was really expensive and they're just not readily available um, on the used market as of yet. So ended up going with another one. But this is just really impressive looking. I mean, the <clears throat> the metal, the brushed look to it is just really, really well done. The edges are are you know, there's no like deformities or, or weird kind of spots where you'd wonder about their QC. Um, the text on the front is, is super clean. Well done. Volume knob feels good. Yeah, really cool amp. So I'm excited to put this through its paces. So um, for those of you who kind of don't really know <clears throat> much about headphone amplifiers, I, I figure I'd, I'd riff on that a little bit here. It does have a, a replaceable power cord outlet, which I will be making use of. I ordered some aftermarket power cables and we'll be you know, putting that in this video as well. Um, you've got a high and a low gain switch depending on what type of headphones you're gonna be listening to. And um, your input here, your the red and white RCAs here, that'll be coming from your digital analog converter. So in my case, the uh, Peachtree DAC, uh, DAC at X will be going uh, RCA out from it to the input here and then uh, the output the red and the white here will be going one to my right speaker my right uh, Atom F5 desktop monitor and the white to the other Atom desktop monitor and since those are powered um, you know they don't need an amplifier so it's just going to be getting the signal from this and uh, this will uh, act as a preamp so I can adjust the volume on the Atom speakers simply by uh, adjusting the volume here, which will be really handy. So yeah, th this will be powering my uh, my set of Sennheiser HD 600s, which I'm excited to give some more power to. They've, they can totally, you can tell they need more power. I'm, I have them hooked up to my audio engine D1 and even at max volume, it's it just sounds, it's not as loud as maybe you might like it during certain songs. So really excited to get this all hooked up, put together and kind of see what it all, how it all shakes out. Here are the stands I ended up choosing for my Atom F5 studio monitors. One with the ISO Acoustics adjustable height and tilt stand. Um, I was kind of between these and the, I think it's Aurelax is the pronunciation. The, it's basically the foam wedges. And I found this really cool YouTube video that I'll, I'll try to find and put a link to down below. And the guy had some pretty advanced recording equipment or, or microphones and did a sound comparison between the ISO Acoustics here and using a uh, a foam wedge like the other thing I was I was considering buying and there's a noticeable improvement in the sound quality uh, between between the ISO acoustics and the um, the foam wedges so I'm probably not going to unbox the unbox these totally right now until I decide to put this all together um, but just kind of wanted to to show you guys this and just kind of highlight that there are some people out there with some pretty advanced um, equipment that that are was able to show. A significant difference even through just watching it on YouTube and going through my my uh, I, I think I listened to it on my cell phone I could still tell a difference so um, really looking forward to putting the atoms up on these stands and seeing how it changes the sound one cool thing if you are thinking about getting the iso acoustic stands is go to their website and they have a um, they have three different sizes I think three of this specific product, all different, um, different compared to you know what size your monitors are, and they have a like a fit guide, so you can go on there, look for your specific monitors and uh, or speakers, and 
it'll recommend a certain size for you. Cause I was kind of lost. I was measuring my speakers and they seemed way too big for this specific size, or I think even the large size they measured too big. But then I went on their website and for the Atom F5, the medium size, which is the L8R155 is what they recommended. So it was really helpful to kind of take the guesswork out of it, just to know that they'd, they'd already kind of thought that over. So, yep, looking forward to setting these up and uh, seeing how it sounds. Here is another part of my desktop hi-fi upgrade. So this are a set of power cables from Zoo Audio. Um, I've looked around a lot at different power cables, both on eBay, online, uh, I think, and I'm pretty sure on this. Someone may be able to help me if I'm wrong, but I think that on average, the price you pay for these Zoo Birth power cables on eBay makes them the most affordable, aftermarket audiophile power cable that's made in America. So I'm throwing at that out there. You can, I would say on eBay, the average closing price for the one meter length is around $45 with shipping. So if someone else knows of a reliable place to get for an um, made in America um, aftermarket power cable for cheaper, please put it down below. That'd be awesome. So this was, to my knowledge, the least expensive one. And I've bought Cullen Cables before. I love uh, their products, CullenCable.com. And um, for this system, I just felt like I, I was going to go more kind of a affordable route, but I still, I still wanted to try to get as much stuff made in America as I could. So let's go ahead and unbox them. I got four, uh, two for the, the, the um, Atom F5s, one for the, uh, the headphone amplifier, the Bifrost, and then one for the actual PC itself. So I'm really imp impressed with the packaging. Just really, really cool. Not just in like a plastic sleeve. We'll open it up. You've got a little instruction manual or a little brochure. Just gonna see if they had any other. Okay, so that's it. That's all you need. I bought a pair of speaker cables from them uh, maybe like a year or so ago, and there was like some contact fluid in one of the boxes. So I was just gonna check and see if that was in here, but it looks like no. So this is the cable. It looks really nice. It looks, uh, I wanna say maybe it looks a little bit thinner than what I was expecting, but it's still a really sturdy looking cable. Oh yeah, very cool. Nice, I think these are Wattgate connectors. It says Zoo Birth here on the side. Very flexible for, I mean, it is thick, but for, for the gauge of it, uh, it, is, it is flexible, which is, which is handy because I'm going to be making a couple tight turns with this. So, um, so the next video, we're going to have it all put together and let's see how it looks. So here it is, the completely upgraded computer desktop system. So as you can see, starting over here, the power strip, the wire mold power strip is in place. I think at least for the time being, I'm gonna keep it up here on my desk. And you can see the Zoo Audio birth power cables plugged in. Uh, I was only able to fit three. I was hoping to be able to plug the monitor in up here as well, but uh, it's gonna have to go somewhere else because I wanted the peach tree to also be plugged in here too. So as you can see, the peach tree's in uh, right there. And then I've got monitor right here, monitor left, and then I've got the shit Bifrost, or excuse me, the shit um, Asgard 2 plugged in right there. I always get those two mixed up. And then my Atom F5s, which I had, I've had for a while. You can see my, my original video. I should say what I had in my original video in case you haven't watched that. You can go back and look now, but um, all I had was the Atom F5s with a Audio Engine D1 preamp slash DAC. And uh, it was awesome. I mean, it was it was great for the money, but I just kind of wanted something a little bit more uh, robust. I mean, I spend a lot of time at my desk, and I figure I might as well kind of treat myself. So, the next thing that I showed you earlier were these ISO acoustic stands, and uh, ended up going on the, the with the shorter of the two bars that they provided. I uh, just I just felt like the taller of the two would would take it well above the height of the monitor, and it's already pretty close to my ear level. The the tweeter that is. So I just kind of figured um, we'd just kind of keep it there. The Peachtree Dacket X is installed, great. 
it's on standby right now, but then if you press uh, power, it illuminates to blue. And uh, I just have the USB cable going into there. I didn't upgrade, uh, full disclosure, did not upgrade or get any sort of fancy, fancy USB cable at this point. I just kind of feel like that's something I need to kind of look into more and decide if I want to do that. I'm not a, a huge, I don't do AB testing, blind testing for the power cables. I don't, you know, I don't necessarily disagree that they could potentially add some performance to my system. Uh, agree or I don't agree or disagree. I kind of look at this more as a hobby and I just think that it looks cool. I mean, I really do. They're built well. They, they just, it's fun to have kind of fun looking things uh, in a hobby like this. So if it sounds better, that's just a bonus. I just think it's fun to admire. So that is that. And then there's the uh, shit uh, Asgard 2. Really cool amp so far. I may do a more in-depth review later on, but uh, initial impressions are great. Uh, uh, my HD 600s have all the power that they that they need now, and uh, certainly has made a big improvement in the sound of them and just the the power on hand. And and also to the uh, the Atom F5s do sound better. Just after uh, maybe only a half half a day or a day spent listening to them as opposed to just having them sitting on the desk. They do sound a good bit better. And uh, I would I would uh, definitely check out that other link or the other video on YouTube where uh, the gentleman compares the sound on the isoacoustic stands to the sound on uh, the Oralex wedges. There's a big difference and that's just through YouTube. So um, this is definitely not Hocus Pocus. That's, and, I'd, and it's one of those things I don't think they look that good. I would much rather have had the foam wedges if it was just from a look standpoint. I think these look kind of spaceshipy, alien, and not really in a good way. Um, yeah, would have much rather paid for the foam wedges too. It's, I think, $30 for those as opposed to 100 for these. Um, but I, I, I did feel like it was a, a pretty big boost in performance from that, that YouTube video even, and definitely big boost in performance um, after installing them and listening to them. So, I'm glad I did it, and uh, I'm hoping in the next six months or so to upgrade my headphones. I did another video. You can see my headphones in there. I've got the Sennheiser HD 600s and the NAD uh, HP 50s. So, you know, middle of the range for for headphones. Uh, you know, they can get a lot more expensive than that, uh, but I, I really do like them. But I feel like now that I've got kind of this higher end uh, DAC, a higher end headphone amplifier that I, I should probably make use of it and get get something a little bit nicer. So I think I'm leaning towards getting something like a uh, pair of the Odysseys uh, or Audis. Some people pronounce it one way or the other. I think it's actually pronounced Odyssey. Uh, maybe the LCD3s or the LCD2s. One of those. Uh, and then the other one that I'm looking at is the Mr. Speaker's Ether. So I think I'll probably end up getting one of those. Uh, in the next six months or so. I really would like something that mimics the sound of the Magna Pans. Those are probably one of my favorite speakers. I just don't have an area in my uh, living space that would account or would, would allow for those to be positioned correctly, you know, a couple feet out from the wall and they're just, they're just tough to accommodate sometimes. So I'd love to kind of capture that into a headphone. So yes, this is my desktop upgrade. I would recommend all of it so far. It seems awesome and I'm really enjoying it. So if you have any questions, just put them down below and thank you for watching.